morning, saints. We'll be in song number 732 this morning. I'm your song leader. We have a guest speaker, and I'll let Bill introduce him for that. Uh, we think we've got the projector fixed, but we make no promises. So if it starts going out on us again, we'll just turn it off and we'll revert to the books. But until then, you're welcome to use the screen as it operates. So, <coughs> you don't like me being in the middle? I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Oh, my goodness. So many bosses here. <laughs> we praise the O oh God, 732. <laughs> we praise the O oh God for the Son of thy love. Good morning. Good to see each of you. <clears throat> Sometimes I like to say, good to see all of you. <clears throat> but either one will get it done. Ah, what a beautiful day. I'm kind of glad our family was here because otherwise <laughs> we, we'd be kind of scarce. <laughs> but <clears throat> Joyce and I have been enjoying having our family home with us and uh, that's always something that we look forward to, and we're happy that uh, our granddaughter, uh, Elizabeth, have two granddaughters here today, <laughs> but Elizabeth has uh, become engaged to uh, our guest speaker today. I guess, Colin, we could, I could call you my grandson-in-law-to-be. After January, just my grandson and all. <laughs> anyway, he's going to be our uh, speaker for today, and we're uh, looking forward to that. <clears throat> uh, among those that uh, we want to remember in prayer, Brother Stan McVeigh is in the hospital with uh, his arm swelling, and uh, they're trying to take care of that. Also, my brother... And his wife had been exposed to the COVID-19 virus and like to remember them. And my sister-in-law, her sister's husband, Roy 
Marshall uh, is in the hospital in Coleman, Alabama, and he has a hole in his bladder and leaking, uh, and they're having to build his uh, blood up so that they can uh, do surgery on Wednesday. Uh, he <clears throat> He's not a big man, but he's down to 105 pounds, uh, I was told. So he, he's been suffering a great deal for uh, several months now. And uh, <clears throat> we're thankful that uh, Mike and uh, Gail's granddaughters are better, Hannah and Kylie, uh, also Amy, don't want to forget her, that they've uh, been fighting the virus, but they are over that now. Uh, with that, let's uh, go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. <clears throat> our Father, we, we come before you to express our, our love for you and our appreciation for all that you have done for us. But as we think of your great and wonderful love, we're, we're reminded that, that we have offended you so greatly, and yet, in spite of that, Father, you have loved us. And you have, have made it possible for us to be forgiven. When we couldn't do anything to where we could be made right in your sight, you, you found a way. You made the way by our Lord going to that cross and suffering so greatly. Father, we feel that it's so inadequate just to say thank you. We do want to obey you in, in all of the ways that you would have us to and to live in such a way that others might see Christ Jesus in us. Not that we should receive any honor or glory, but all that would be given unto you and to the Lord Jesus. We're very humbled that you love us so much. But we're very thankful and grateful that, that you have. And we're thankful that we can bring before you those that we have mentioned this day uh, that are in need of uh, your healing, those who need your strength, and those who need your comfort. You are the God of all comfort. And you stand ready to help us you know our needs, but you also want us to acknowledge them to you. And we, we pray that you will be with those that are in need of healing. And Father, as we come before you to worship you, may each of us realize that if we worship acceptably, we, each individual, has to approach your throne of grace with humility, with love and gratitude for all that you have done for us. We pray that our songs will be pleasing to your ear and that our meditations as we are led and thought upon your word by Colin, that, that all of that will be pleasing. But also, Father, that each of us, being drawn so nearer to you, will be changed into the likeness of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Song 180, God is love.
not in the habit of eating this one, so when we get to the uh, second part of that song, I'm going to fade out because it's supposed to be very nice. I think we should also sing out. Come, let us all unite to sing. God is share the Lord. No one is a stranger. 
We gather each first day of the week that we might worship the Lord. As the song just told us, we are to come, share the bread, share the cup, and remember what Jesus has done for us. We do that as we gather on the first day of the week, as the scriptures teach us. The bread represents Christ's body as he gave it. And the cup represents the blood that was shed for us, that we might be washed of our sins. This morning we ask that you bow as Dave leads us in prayer for the bread. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this chance to gather together to give you worship and praise. Let us take this emblem of your son's body, this bread, in a manner pleasing unto you. In Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Amen. Likewise, we are to partake of the cup, which represents the blood that was shed for our sin. Let's bow as we give thanks. Dear Father, we thank you so much for your love for us, that you would give your Son to pay the price for our sins, to give his body and shed his blood, we pray, Father, you'll be with each one of us this morning as we partake of this cup that we can do so in a manner pleasing unto you, remembering that Jesus paid the price for our sins. Be with us now as we partake, and it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.
This morning as we've gathered here, part of our worship is to lay by and store. The scriptures teach us to lay by and store of our means as we've been prospered. So let's think on those things that we've been so richly blessed with. We know that everything we have comes from the Lord. We are a blessed nation. We are a richly blessed people. Let's bow now as Dave leads us as we prepare to give. Dear Lord, we know that you do not have need for this, but as we've been instructed to give with a cheerful heart to help those that are in need, to help spread your word. Let us give with a cheerful heart in a manner pleasing unto you. In Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Amen. Sing this through twice. 137, I stand in. You are beautiful, the
books, 627. Good morning. I'd like to first ask, how many times have you been failed in your life? How many times has something let you down? Whether it's maybe a, a parent, a, a sibling, a friend, could be your, your vehicle, could be the government, whatever it may be. How many times have you been let down? Surely there's at least been a couple of times. And that's a little bit of what we're going to look at today. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, if you'd like to turn there. We're going to read a couple verses when we, as we start out here. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we're going to look at verses 4 and 5. 1 Corinthians, or, uh, yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4 and verse 5. It says, And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit uh, and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. That's again, that's what we're looking at today. There's a lot of things in this world that, that may let us down. We even let ourselves down sometimes. But when we look at the Scripture, when we look at the Word of God, we're never disappointed. We're never let down. Sometimes we'll let go. Sometimes we'll let God down. But He's always standing there with His arm outstretched. He never lets us down. He's always there and He stands firm. The Word of the Lord is truth. We can look at John chapter 17 and verse 17 for that. The Word of the Lord is worthy of trust. 1 John 4 and verse 1. And those who serve the Lord teach His Word. Titus chapter 2, verses 7 through 8. Those are our points this morning. That the word of the Lord is truth, it's worthy of trust, and it ought to be taught. Faith in the power of man will fail, but faith in the power of God endures forever. That's something that we see all throughout the scriptures. No matter where we stand, no matter what disagreements we may have, as long as we're founded in the word, as long as we're grounded in God's word, that's where salvation is found. That's where that rock is is found. And that's where we'll never be let down. We'll never be disappointed, except maybe in ourselves, if we're not living the way we should. But the Word of God is truth. It speaks for itself. You know how sometimes with a, with a, a good story that somebody's telling, you know, they may exaggerate it a little bit. My younger brother used to do that all the time. No matter what story he told, he would always, always exaggerated as much as he could. He, he liked to add some dramatic flair to it. No, but we don't need that with the Word of God. The Word of God has everything that it needs. If we try and add flair to it, we're only hurting it. We're only hurting its influence. If we try to downplay, it's the same effect. But when it comes to man's stories, we can do that. Sometimes it needs a little bit of flair because sometimes stories are, are, are rather boring. Sometimes they're, they're so intense that you have to draw them back a little bit or people are going to lose their mind. But the Word of God is written in a way that it doesn't need anything added. It doesn't need anything taken away, whether effect or whether word. It's perfect, sound, truth. And that's what we ought to recognize it as, as, as Christians, as followers of God. We see that it's the ultimate truth. There is... No need and nor is it righteous to tell falsehoods or to exaggerate the word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. It brings light to a world corrupted by sin. And it brings truth and life. John chapter 14 and verse 6. That's what the word of God does. It brings light into a world of darkness. It brings light into lives that are full of darkness. And it's that light, it's that rock that we can always hold on to. It'll never falter, it'll never fail. It always holds strong, and no matter what may be going on in the world. You know, that's one thing that's always stood since the beginning of time, is God and His Word. People may not have had the Bible like we have today in the beginning of time, but 
We have it now, and they had the word of God back then just in a different form. And it's always been. It never failed. People turn from it many times. But it's always there for people to come back to. You know, we can look at the example of the, the prodigal son returning home. The father there being in the, the position of, of where God is. When he saw his child coming back, he, he ran to him. He greeted him in open arms. That's what God does for us. He greets us with open arms. He's standing there waiting for our return. And as long as we stand there by his side, he'll hold tight to us. It's us who turns away from him. It's us who falter, us who fail. The imperfect creature. The ones who make poor choices. The ones who choose not to follow that sound word of the Lord. Every true and sound thing found in the world confirms the word of God. You know, that's something where, where people in the world will go to try and disprove God's word. They'll go into the world and look at those things that have been, those things that they think will be. You know, something that, that's fascinated me for a while, but I never really dug into too deep, was that of uh, fossils. You know, that archaeological research. And everything that people find, if it's something that's true, and it's not something that's made up, something that's blown out of proportion, something that's exaggerated, it confirms the word. And that's something that boggles some people's mind. We can't comprehend how everything confirms the word of God. But it's because the word of God is that sound truth. It's that sound word of God that's been since the beginning. We can trust the word of God. And that's our next point here. One must trust in the word of God and not be deceived by other doctrines. We need to trust what is firm. We can look at 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1 as well as Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. We need to trust in the word of God. We need to trust in the power of God because it delivers us. John chapter 10, verses 9 through 11. The word of God, the power of God, the, the ability that God possesses, that unlimited power, that's what saves us from the world. That's what saves us from that darkness. But we have to follow God's word in order to receive that. In order to receive that blessing, in order to, to, to receive that reward that's promised to us. We have to do what the scriptures tell us. We have to trust in that word. We have to trust in that power. We have to trust that it's true. One must trust that the Lord will give increase where his word is planted. 1 Corinthians 3, verses 6 through 7. That's another uh, area where sometimes people fail. They think that, that God has left them to do all the work. But looking at that passage there, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 through 7, it says there, that we may plant the seeds, we may water the seeds, but God is the one that gives the increase. When His Word falls on a, a willing heart, when it falls on that, that rich soil that wants to grow, God will give that increase. God will give that, that gain to Christ's body, to the church. And they'll be added to that number that ends up in heaven when this life here on earth is done. But we have to trust that. We have to trust that the word of the Lord will do what it says it will do. God has the power. He has the ability to deliver all who turn to him. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. And he's the only being who will never fail anyone. We can trust in him without any doubt in our minds. We can trust in him and know that no matter what happens, no matter what comes our way, God will never fail. God will always be there for us. He'll be there for all those who come to Him. For all those who follow Him. We'll never be lost to, to our own will. We'll never be lost to, to do things on our own if we're following the Lord. You know, in this life, people come and go. Things come and go. But God is that, that standard that always holds firm. No matter what changes in this physical world, God is always there where he's always been. And we can trust in that. And we need to teach others to trust in that also. That, that last point for today. We need to teach the word of God. You know, there are a lot of different ways to teach God's word. We can, we can teach by word of mouth like what I'm doing here. 
like what Scott does, like what preachers all around the world do, like what people all around the world do. That's one way of teaching. But another way of teaching that sometimes people forget is teaching by example. That's what Christ did. That's what the apostles did. That's what every godly example that we see in the scriptures did. They lived their lives according to God's will. They didn't just teach what people were supposed to do. They showed what people were supposed to do. And that's one of the best ways that we can teach. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1. Again, Christ, as well as, as all faithful followers of the Lord, both past and present, are known to be righteous by their works. Look at the Hebrews chapter 11, what's called the faith chapter. All those people who, who they did this, and they, they proved their faith by their works. And that's what we're told we're supposed to do. To show our faith by our works. By setting that example. Teaching by what we do, not just by what we say. Yes, we do need to teach verbally also, but without a living example, without our lives being an example, being a testament to what we say, if we're not living what we teach, then there will be few, if any, who follow. You know, if you've been in any kind of a, an organization or even a, any kind of a job where, you know, you have people above you, you tend to not want to follow people that, that wouldn't do what they're telling you to do. But those leaders who say, I'm not telling you to do anything I wouldn't do, and then they show that by their works, those are the people that you follow. Because you can trust that they're looking out for your own good because they care about themselves and they're not going to make you do anything that they would not do themselves. And that's what we see in the example of Christ. That's what we see in the examples that we find in Scripture. The people that, that teach the Word of God that, that are recorded in the Bible, those people did things beyond what we can even imagine going through. And they teach us to do the same thing if necessary. Many times we don't have to worry about that. In this present age, we don't have to worry about being persecuted, being hunted down and and killed for our faith, for our Christianity. But if that's what it came to, that's what we need to do. Because the Word of God is there. We can trust it. And we need to teach it to others, to the best of our ability. The idea of, again, do as I say, not as I do, that doesn't work for, for Christians. For Christians, one must live faithfully. That is if they wish to be saved, and they wish to, to save others. And we're not going to get very, very far just by telling people what the Bible says. We have to show people what the Bible says. To live according to Christ's example. You know, walk in the footsteps of Jesus, wherever they may go. I'm not sure if you all sing that song here. That's one that I sung a lot growing up. That's what we're supposed to do as Christians. To walk in Christ's footsteps to the best of our ability. We should look back on our path and we may see a couple of staggering points there. A couple places where we step to one side or the other. But the core of that walk should be right in Christ's footsteps. And that's the same place as we should be throughout the rest of our lives going forward. Walking in the footsteps of Christ. Following his example. Trusting in his word, teaching his word, recognizing that it's that one truth, that truth that will stand forever and has stood the test of time. That's what we need to trust in. That's what we need to follow. That's what we need to teach to everyone who will hear and trust that God will give that increase if we spread the seed of the word. One last example. When you think about who your role models are, or maybe have been. What kind of people do you think? Just finishing off this last point. Do you think of people who told you to do something, but then didn't follow through themselves? Or do you think of people that set the example for you? Do you think of people who, who did what they taught to be right? Who did what the scripture showed to be right? 
Or when you think of a role model, do you think of people who handed you a Bible, said, read this and do what it says, and then they left you to yourself? If we want to be an example, if we want to be a, a role model, if we want to be a, a good Christian, then we need to walk according to the path that's been laid for us. We shouldn't just teach the word, but we should do the word. The word of God is truth. The word of God should and can be trusted. The word of God should be taught. And finally, the word of the Lord endures forever. That's what we can have faith in. We shouldn't have faith in the wisdom of man as, as we read in Corinthians there. That's not what Paul had. He didn't have faith in man. He didn't have faith in the wisdom of man. The wisdom of man fails. He had faith and he had wisdom from the power of God, from the word of God. And we can have the same today. If there's anyone here this morning who, who isn't following according to that example, who isn't walking according to, to Christ's footsteps, who isn't trusting in the word of God, believing it's true, then there's no better time than today. There's no better time than this morning to, to make those needs known, to make yourself right with the Lord. Or if there's anyone here who's not a Christian, we have laid before us what we need to do, what we need to follow, to hear the word, believe the word, repent of our sins, confess that, that Christ is the Son of God. Be baptized in the water. Be cleansed with Christ's blood. and Then we need to live faithfully for the rest of our lives. Walk in those footsteps of Christ to the best of our ability, stepping right where he stepped until our dying breath. And then, if we do that, we'll join him in heaven one day. So if there's anyone here this morning who has any kind of a need, please make your needs known as we stand and as we sing. I'm in the way the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land where I may be. Telling the world that Jesus saves me. Yes, I'm in the glory land where I may be. I'm in the glory land where I may be. You're welcome to join us for worship again. And as always, we have Bible study Wednesday nights at 7. Dennis has a closing prayer.